Welcome to the MoVC Control Cabinet Products Basic to Intermediate Training. This is Session 9, and you notice there's no lab number with it. That's intentional because this isn't a lab session. What we're going to do is take a quick break after doing our first two labs to talk about a topic that applies to multiple labs after this. That's why we're not bundling it with the next lab because it's really a broad concept that you'll need to understand. So we're going to dive into this right now. This is just a short session, but I think you'll find it interesting and very helpful for other activities. We're going to talk about how the VFD performs motion. Now, of course, every brand of VFD handles this differently, but we're talking about the Movi C products, specifically Movi Drive technology, Movi Drive system, and Movi Drive modular. Let's start with MoviDrive technology, which is the simplest of those three VFDs. As you know, it can operate standalone, either being controlled by its I.O., or it can be operated in connection with a PLC or controller over a field bus. Whichever mode you're using to control it, it generates its basic motion, and by this I mean speed control, simple positioning where it just goes to a specific location, or torque control where it maintains a fixed torque, does all of these using routines stored in its firmware. In other words, it's built-in software. So everything it needs to do this kind of motion is built into it. Its inputs and outputs and or its field bus card passes commands and parameters to the VFD, and then it takes that information and performs motion using those built-in firmware routines. That's pretty much the whole show for MoviDrive technology. Now, what if you need to do really complicated motion? And by this, I mean generate motion that produces complex curves or maybe a robotics application where it's doing something more than just basic motion. It's doing a very sophisticated, complex motion. Can you do it? Well, probably not unless you are really clever with PLC programming. It is potentially possible for you to generate sophisticated motion if you bring a PLC into the equation, craft your own software to generate that motion path, and then send a whole sequence of basic commands over the field bus to the MoviDrive technology. Under those conditions, you might be able to generate a very complex motion path, but it would be totally up to you to do it. The MoviDrive technology would just be carrying out very simple motions. It would be up to you to turn those into complex motions. Now, does that mean SCW Eurodrive doesn't have a solution for those needs? Well, of course not. We definitely have a solution for those needs, and here it is. We divide the labor with the MoviDrive system and MoviDrive modular products. These, of course, are similar VFDs to MoviDrive technology. They have a lot of hardware similarities, but they definitely can do more. They're a little bit up the chain, but still part of the same family. And the reason they can do more complex things is because they have a controller paired with them. Although you can operate them to a limited degree standalone, they're really intended to operate with a controller. And that controller divides the labor between the VFD and the controller itself and that controller helps share the labor with the VFD. The controller, in fact, is doing the heavy lifting. The VFD is just doing some very simple things. So what happens is for just basic motion, when you're not doing anything fancy, in other words, you're doing speed position or torque control, you're just using those same routines stored in the MoviDrive system or MoviDrive modular's firmware. What the controller does is just send some basic commands to it saying, do these built-in firmware routines, and that's it. You may remember I introduced the term a while back, interpolated versus uninterpolated motion. Well, this is uninterpolated motion, and that doesn't put too much of a load on the controller. The controller's just sending some simple commands, and that is it. So those simple commands are invoking firmware routines, which we're going to be learning about in this session. That's really what we're here to talk about, by the way. It's the built-in firmware routines. You don't need a very big controller if your VFDs are mostly doing simple motion. But what if you're not? What if you want to do something really complicated, like a camming application or a robot? Well, then in that case, the controller's got to do a lot more work. 
It's calculating step-by-step -step a motion profile, and then it's passing commands to the VFD. So it's giving it like little baby steps, telling it what to do. And the VFD is then using its firmware to carry out those baby steps. But the controller's doing a lot of work because it's calculating all those baby steps second by second. That is really the key difference between MobiDrive system, MobiDrive modular, and the MobiDrive technology, which of course is a somewhat simpler VFD. But we're not really working with those systems today. We're not going to be working with MobiDrive system and MobiDrive modular. That's really for another class. So let's come back to MobiDrive technology. We're going to talk about what's inside the firmware. Now, I kind of just contradicted myself because this firmware is in all three products. It's not just in MobiDrive technology. It works pretty much the same way. In fact, it's in the decentralized products, which we're not talking about at all. So I'm giving you the background to understand really what's going on inside all these products. But we're only going to focus on it from the perspective of MobiDrive technology. We call this magic firmware Function Control Blocks, and we abbreviate that FCB. Function Control Blocks are those firmware routines that do the baby steps, the really basic things. And here is a master list of them. It's not actually too large. There are only 18 at this time. I don't guarantee that SEW Eurodrive won't add some others in the future. But these are the current ones. They each have a number, and you notice there are some missing numbers in this list. Right now it goes from 1 to 26, but there are only 18 total. Maybe that suggests there will be others at some point in time. Doesn't matter. Right now this is the way it is, and these FCBs live in the VFD's firmware, and they perform all the basic motion operations. Just take a look at their names, for example, 05. That one's used for basic speed control. 07 does basic torque control. 20 does jogging. 01 does output stage inhibiting. 02 does default stops. 04 does manual mode. As each one of these gets invoked, it does some specific basic task that is important in what a VFD does. Understand it from that point of view, each of these is almost just like a little routine that can do one specific kind of motion. As you can guess, just with the FCBs, the VFD can do a lot. It can do simple speed, position, or torque control, which in many applications is all you need. I would say simple shaft spinning applications greatly outweigh the exciting ones like robotics and camming. FCBs alone can do an awful lot, and that's what we're going to be playing with in the next few labs. Now, a few big ideas. This is important to understand. While the FCBs do the actual work, they get their operating parameters from many different sources. They don't get them from just one place, and that is why MoVC is such a powerful product. The FCBs are actually extremely flexible how they can behave and where they get their information. Now, they are selected, activated, and controlled in a variety of ways, too. And that means motion control is extremely flexible. FCBs can be selected, activated, and controlled by I.O., parameters, the field bus. There are a lot of possibilities here, and we're going to explore several of them throughout this class. Again, that's why I want you to understand them now, because I'm going to be talking about them on and off until we get to the end. Let me give you a few facts and guidelines associated with FCBs. First of all, only one FCB can have control at a time. You clearly cannot have FCBs competing for control. That would be a deadly situation, and it's just not possible. So here's your list of FCBs. Only one can be in control at a time. You may wonder, well, can I know which one's running the show? And the answer is absolutely. We make it really trivial. Just look at the LED display on the front of the VFD or in a multi-axis system on the axis of interest. That number is the FCB's number that's controlling the axis. The only reason you won't see that is if a fault is coming up, that will take priority and display instead. But when everything's running normally, what you're seeing is the FCB's number. Right there, for example, in this illustration, you notice 05 is showing. That means we're in that particular mode, which happens to be simple speed control. 
So look at the display on the front of the VFD and you know what FCB is running. You can also see this by the status display shown in the access circle in Movi Suite, but just a normal operation if you just walk past a running VFD on a factory floor and you know your FCB numbers, you can look at that display and immediately know what it's doing. FCBs are prioritized. You notice this list is not a numerical order. It begins with 01, but the second number is 14, and the last number is 02. I'm not sure why they didn't organize them in such a way they could be numbered to match their priority, but for whatever reason, this is the order that they have to be in for the right priority. These are the numbers they have to use. The reason we have priorities is to handle the situation where two FCBs both want to get control at once. How do you decide which one gets control? It's easy. The one with the highest priority always gets control. That is why, by the way, FCB01, which is output stage inhibit, has the highest priority because that's a super important one and you want that one to always win if there's a competition. Look at some of the others. The next one is emergency stop, which is pretty important too. Priority is something worth understanding. Higher rank priorities always override lower ones. It's that simple. Do be aware that not all FCBs can work in all control modes. For example, if you're in an open loop motor mode like VF or ELSM, you cannot call a positioning FCB. That would be ridiculous because you can't position without an encoder or a resolver. So some FCBs will not work in certain modes. That's just normal and correct and logical. If you want to know more about FCBs, take a look at the manual. There's a whole section on them. Enough said. Now, what about connecting the dots? FCBs do the work, but they have to get their information and guidance from somewhere. And again, this is why the MoVC product is so incredibly flexible, because we have made the ability to connect the dots extremely flexible. Here's an illustration of that. We have multiple places you can get data to feed the FCBs. There can be local set points and fixed set points, things that you just set up in the VFD. You can also have process data words coming over a field bus from a controller or a PLC. And you can have various kinds of application limits that keep things within constraints. These are all data sources. You don't necessarily have to use them all, but they're all available. Then you have control values. These are things that directly connect to the FCBs and control them. These include control words, set point connections, profile values, and torque limits. All of these pull their data from the data sources and then they route them to the FCBs. And then of course the FCBs themselves are out there ready to do the motion. I've listed the three most common ones, but remember there's 18 total. This is sort of like a virtual switchboard that isn't wired up and you can wire it yourself. You can connect data sources to control values to FCBs and you can do it in many different ways. So the system's behavior is set up by linking these elements together and that configures it. It's like virtual wiring where all these things get hooked up and the VFD then behaves according to the way it's wired and the way each of these feeds into each other thing. You can set up links by configuration, in other words, in Movi Suite by setting parameters. You can use digital signals, which come in on the IO, and you can use process data words, which come over the field bus or a combination of these. And that's what we'll be doing in different labs. So I want you to understand that because you'll need to know really why we're doing some things that look a little weird. In many cases, we're setting up data sources and we're hooking up virtual wires. Now, FCBs can be configured. The way you do this is you go to the Drive Functions menu and you'll get a list of the available FCBs and you can then pick that as a submenu and then you'll see a screen with parameters and switches that configure its behavior. The one you're seeing here is for jog mode, which is a very common one. We'll be playing with that in the next lab, in fact. So for example, here are some set points, jog acceleration and deceleration values that can be changed, and switches that you turn on and off to control where data is coming from. These are all things that FCBs have. I encourage you explore this menu and these submenus just to get an idea what's out there. So that was just a quick tour. 
That was very simplified, but it's enough to explain what we're going to do in this class. If you want to know more about FCBs, that's probably a more advanced class. Looking ahead, where are we going to go with this? Well, we're going to do some direct FCB control in the next labs ahead, but ultimately we're going to transition to something that is a better way to do many things. We're going to use MoviKits. One of the most powerful ways to configure and control a VFD is to use a MoviKit, one of those canned application modules that SCW Eurodrive makes available and sells to be used with our VFDs. All three VFD types, technology, system, and modular, have MoviKits. Technology has a particular kind that we're going to be playing with called drive level, and we will be working with those a few labs ahead. But remember this. Ultimately, MoviKits behind the scenes are using FCBs to control the VFD. So what you've just learned explains even those. And we'll be learning a lot more about these later. So that's the end of session nine. Wasn't very long, but I hope you found that illuminating and helpful. And we'll be back to labs in session 10.